Ever looked at the back of your computer and wondered what all those ports actually do? From USB and HDMI to Firewire and eSATA, each one has a specific purpose, but using the wrong one can slow you down or even damage your devices. In this video, I'll break down every I.O. port on your motherboard so you'll know exactly where to plug in your keyboard, monitor, external drives, and more. Whether you're building a PC, upgrading your setup, or just curious, this guide will save you time and frustration. Ready to master your motherboard's I.O. interfaces? Let's dive in. I.O. Interface Motherboard Motherboards are built with multiple I.O. interfaces. In fact, it means input output. The I behalf for in is the input, and the O for out is the output. These are input output interfaces, which are located on the back panel of the motherboard. We have the PS2 connector, nothing to do with the PlayStation, which is a six pin mini DIN connector. Usually the motherboard has one or two. This connector is used to connect the mouse and keyboard. Green is for the mouse. And purple, reserved for the keyboard. So, this type of connector is a fairly old technology, which is gradually being replaced by USB ports. The USB port it is the most common interface on a motherboard. The term USB stands for Universal Serial Bus. Motherboards usually have more than one, as many devices use the USB interface, like keyboards, mice, SD card readers, smartphones and cameras. Another advantage of using USB is that this type of port also provides electrical power. This type of port is either on the back of the motherboard or directly on the front of the case. We will now talk about the different versions of USB. We have version 1.0, which was released in 1996. His transfer speed is 1.5 megabit per second. Then USB 1.1 arrived two years later in 1998 and allows you to reach a transfer speed of 12 megabit per second. That's eight times more than version 1.0. USB 2.0 was released in 2001 and allows a speed of about 480 megabit per second. That's 40 times more than USB 1.0. And the latest version known today is USB 3.0, which offers a transfer speed of up to 5 gigabit per second. That's 10 times more than USB 2.0 and 3,333 times more than the first version of USB. This is huge in evolution. Now, let's move on to another interface that is found on older motherboards, and that is the serial port. When we talk about serial, it means that the sending is done by one bit of data at a time. The serial port, which is also called DB9, is a fairly old interface which is not found on new motherboards anymore. At the time, this type of port was mainly used to connect terminals and modems to computers. But today, it has been largely replaced by the USB interface, which is much faster. The most common interface for a serial port is the RS-232 standard. By the way, you can easily find USB adapters in RS-232. Very useful, for example, to connect to switches that do not have a mini USB port using a laptop, which does not have a serial port. Parallel port. Now let's move on to the parallel port, which was mainly used to connect printers and which is also gradually being removed, as for the serial port, by the USB port. This port uses a large connector which is very often referred to as the DB25. And unlike serial ports, which send data one bit at a time, the parallel port sends data signals simultaneously over several parallel channels. 
We will now move on to the video port that allows you to connect the computer screen. So, in the example, it's a video port integrated into the motherboard. This is called a graphics card integrated into the motherboard. The graphics card is what generates images from your computer to your monitor. The most common type of port on an integrated video card is the Video Graphics Array, VGA port. The VGA port carries analog data, which contains 15 pins divided into three rows and is usually blue in color. Integrated video cards are usually not very powerful. If it's for office automation, it's perfectly fine. But as soon as you want to play video games or use graphics applications, well, it can cause problems. That's why many people bypass the motherboard's built-in video card, adding an expansion card that's powerful enough to meet their needs. That is to say, they add a graphics card on the motherboard. Now, let's move on to the IEE-1394 connector, which is called Firewire instead. This type of port is used to connect video cameras and printers. It has transfer speeds very similar to the USB port, but it's not as popular. That's why it's difficult to find this type of port on modern motherboards today. The Firewire port has a transfer speed of about 400 megabit per second. I remember that at the time, I used this type of port very commonly to transfer my analog videos, taken by a mini DV camera, to my computer. This allowed me to digitize them. Network Port We will now move on to the network interface which is a port on the motherboard used for networking. For example, connecting to the internet and sharing data between computers. This type of port is designed to accommodate an Ethernet cable with an RJ45 connector. The network adapter is used to provide the computer with a dedicated, persistent connection to the network. Each network adapter has its own unique identifier, which is called the MAC address. Its transfer speed usually ranges from 10 to 1000 megabit per second. Now let's move on to the sound card. Just like with integrated video, if the motherboard is equipped with an audio output, then it's called an integrated sound card. This is what processes the sound through the computer's speakers. A basic sound card contains at least one port for the speakers, often represented in green, and a port for the microphone, which is recognized by the pink port. The sound cards, which are more sophisticated, will have additional ports. For example, for the bass, surround sound, and ports for other digital audio equipment. Port eSATA the last port we will see is the SATA port, which is also called eSATA, or external SATA. It is used to connect a SATA device to a computer, such as a SATA external hard drive. It works very similarly to USB and the FireWire port, but the transfer speed is much faster. The disadvantage it has over USB and FireWire is that a SATA needs a separate power supply to power the drive. However, there is a new SATA port, which is called eSATAP, and which is self-powered by the eSATA.